Hello dear viewer and welcome back to Dark Deity on Steam with me Jalanon. Today we have finished saving Irving's mother. You can check out last episode to see how that went. And uh yeah, yeah. We are hopefully starting a revolution, I guess. Probably. Goodbye, Barry. We'll find out. Should have expected to find you all up. <sighs> Can't sleep. There's plenty to keep the mind busy. I'm sure you know well enough. Elias, any luck with the necromancer? <sighs> Not yet. The astral space in these anchors is immense, and none too pleasant. I've encountered a few souls so far, but nothing resembling Aquinos. <gasps> Goodness, man, you look terrible. Are you feeling alright? I'm fine. Just tired is all. Though I must admit, some of these souls, they're so... disfigured. Charming. Aquinos must have tortured them for years, and it seems he was fairly imaginative in his methods. It's hard to imagine the people they once were. Don't try to. That could be just what he wants, to slow you down and discourage you. Listen, you've accomplished a great deal today. Why don't you get some rest? Perhaps. I think that might be wise. Hmm. Don't lose heart, Elias. Your efforts will bear fruit soon enough. A moment, please. Speaking of which, we've made some headway on the history of the object. The documents provided by the Mystic Council have been instrumental. What did you discover? Its creation appears to date back before the Calamity. In those days, there were many attempts to artificially manufacture aspects. The appropriate materials, or so they thought, were gathered. Crystals of varying qualities from the depths of the void lost. Then they were often infused into objects and then flooded with exorbitant amounts of arcane energy. In this case, the stones appear to have been embedded into the branch of an ancient tree that the species I'm unable to recognize. Of course, there are no indications that any of these efforts actually succeeded in creating aspects. Instead, Many seem to have produced soul anchors, not unlike the stone which guided us to Kueli Simash. So the staff functions as a sort of multi-roomed prison? Sure. Of souls, yes. And one that has survived millennia at that, without the typical signs of deterioration. From the looks of the glove Aquinos wore to wield it, touch alone appears sufficient to transfer a soul into one of its anchors. Hmm. Truly terrifying. Perhaps it's best to destroy it. I wouldn't advise that. Not just yet. There's still much we could learn from it. And I've only just begun to explore the records of known artifacts from before the Calamity. Pace yourself. If you say so, but it's evident we should approach this business about the staff with caution. I fear it may yet play some role in Akmanos' plot. Certainly. I concur. We will tread lightly. I won't let it out of our sight, I assure you. Good. Now, if there's nothing else to report, I'll take my leave. Sleep well. We'll see you at the Council in the morning. All right. Hmm. Well, we now have a crazy magic staff. I'm sure there won't be any terrible downsides to having that. Sounds like Akmanos has had this plan for a long time, if he maybe created that staff in the first place. So, let's talk about that, shall we? Helena. Thalena. Thalena. How many trips have you made around the sun? I still don't have an eye for such things. If you must know. More than 400. Hmm. You have lived history then, while others have merely studied it. I've done more than live it. I've shaped it. It is willed. Few are afforded that privilege. Mm -hmm. Within the ranks of the Mystic Council's wardens, it's more common than you might think. Have you served them long? No, I joined only recently. How recently? Around 20 years ago. <laughs> the world must look different through your eyes. I'd have to look through yours to know. I wonder. Perhaps you would. A shame that isn't possible. It might be, but not by any magic I know now. There are many years of your life yet. So it shall be. There certainly are. Okay. Hmm. No, I thought he said something about how he was planning to be dead sooner. Anyway, no. Helena, how are you holding up? <laughs> I'm well. I just ran into Alden on my way. He was practicing his spells. Alden? What kind of spells? Elemental magic? I hope he wasn't near any trees. He seemed to be taking precautions. Good. I don't know how many times I've warned him about that. He is an incredibly skilled mage. He is, but he's still so young. If he doesn't learn to control his powers, I worry they'll get the best of him. It's a blessing, then, that he has such a wise and caring teacher. I don't know. I'd hardly consider myself his teacher. I tried once to get him interested in healing magic, but it never stuck. No. He must walk along his own path. <sighs> I know, but sometimes I just feel like he's being asked to run before he can crawl. It's not fair, and it's certainly not his fault. But it means he ends up needing a lot of attention. Do you resent this? I wouldn't say resent, 
but sometimes it's a little exhausting. Would you prefer that he was out on his own? Definitely not. I'd be worried sick about him. See it now? Then you should consider yourself lucky. Not every sister is so fortunate to feel this way about her brother. I suspect you do not only teach him, but learn from him as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. He has a sort of willingness to try things I wouldn't have even thought possible. And he's developed a pretty good track record of actually doing those things, too. Mm. Perhaps that is his gift to you. You really think so? I guess it is. One of them, anyway. One of many. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I'm glad you said that, Helena. I think I needed the reminder. <laughs> Of course. You have reminded me in kind many times. The least I can do is return the favor. All right, then. Vesta. Vesta, if we succeed in securing the aspects, you will have fulfilled your duty, will you not? That's right. What will you do then? Sworn to protect. Whatever next needs doing, whatever's right. I wonder. But how will you recognize that when it comes? How will you know when you're where you're meant to be? When you heard the call of the gods, your mission became clear, no? That's right. Yes, I knew I had to challenge the champion of Oasis. Mm -hmm. And what did you do then? I followed him to you, and then others, through yet more challenges. And how did you know that was what you were meant to do? The silent guide leads true. It seemed clear at the time. One challenge led to the next. Why else would the gods have led me to Orima when they did? Tested me as they did, if not to join all of you in something greater? Exactly. Your call has never left you, just as my duty will never leave me. How I fulfill that duty will change as the world changes. But when the time comes, I'll know what to do then, just like I knew it before. You're wise not to bind yourself up with tomorrow's concerns. Today's troubles are enough. Naira was the same way. When our quest is complete, you should find her. No. Vesta, I told you, I cannot return. Take heart. No. But I have the feeling her time at the monastery came to an end not long after yours. I don't understand. How can you be sure? I'm not. It's just a feeling I have. Maybe she'll be the one to find you, not unlike how you found Orima. That may be. But for now, it's as you say. We focus on today. My shield is yours. And there's no shortage of tasks ahead, though I'm glad to face them side by side with a friend. As am I. Okay. See ya. Monroe. <laughs> See ya. How are you? Why do you look so chipper today? Hmm. Well, I did a little digging. Turns out I actually stayed at your parents' inn when I was younger once. Alrighty, congratulations. <sighs> Don't be ungrateful. I'm here for a reason. Can you not? I never doubted that. You're so clever. Listen, I liked your little town. It had much more charm than any of the other hamlets we visited. I would like to ask you more about it so that I can work to ensure it stays as nice as it is when I hold the power of House Valpurin. Aren't you clever? You do know it's under the jurisdiction of the Valmyrans? Naturally. Yes, of course I know that. That doesn't leave me entirely powerless in the matter, though. I wouldn't expect you to know such things. Very kind of you, if I do say so myself. Yes. What do you think? <laughs> what do I think? I think I have no idea when you turn into the benevolent type. It's purely selfish, truly. I find value in my experience traveling to Duskwater as a child, and thus I want to do the same for my children one day. Could have fooled me. Oh, shove off. Any other backwater dunghole town would serve the same purpose, and you know it. There's nothing special about Duskwater. I beg to differ. I would expect you to have more pride in where you came from. Not everyone comes from a place worthy of pride, Monroe. Of all the things it seems like you might understand, it's that. Well, you wouldn't want me to put in a good word? Of course I'd want that. It's my home. My parents run the biggest business in town. So then, what is the fuss? I swear, you countryside women can't make up your minds worth half a coin. Was that all? You're treading dangerous ground here. <laughs> what? I thought it was funny. It's a joke. Explain. I'm leaving now. If you're being sincere and asking, we can talk about it another time. All right. My apologies. <laughs> Sounds like he's trying, at least. Okay. All right, Monroe. At least you're trying, I guess. Lincoln, I'll take this chance to thank you while I can. You fought valiantly at arrogance, as if Esme were your own mother. I won't forget that. She might as well have been. She gave me two brothers to fight by my side. It's a great personal comfort to know she's safe. Still. For me as well. Though, no, it's no comfort to know our enemies would go to such lengths. We should assume their methods know no more bounds. How is this fair? 
If that's true, then this is hardly a fair fight. I've seen too much war to believe in fair fights. The ground is always higher somewhere. But it's not the advantage that determines the victor. Sterling knew that well. Do you miss him still? Of course. As do you, I'm sure. <sighs> I can't help but feel as though I could dispatch a letter to a courtier and hear back from him. Or like I might run into him in sojourn at her next briefing. I used to look forward to those. In a way, he's closer now. What we do for our country, for Etlin, we do for him. How did we get here, Irving? You consulting me as I mourn your own brother's death. It was a long road that brought us here. We've each stood on either side of grief at one point or another. Indeed. Indeed we have. And now the choice before us is clear as spring water. Let's not hesitate to make it. For those we've lost, and those who might yet be saved. I know I won't. There's no use turning back now. That's a good combo. Okay. Nobody else for Irving, Ren, and me. I bet they've been on opposite sides of the diplomatic incidents before. That emblem you carry, I know it well. <sighs> I wish I could say I'm surprised. Mm. I suspect there's not much that surprises you, Grand Inquisitor. That's correct. Less and less, I'll admit. Though these times may be the strangest I've seen yet. In how many years? <laughs> That's a rude question to ask, you know. Forgive me, I do not deal in necessities. I have other expertise. Yes, I'm sure you do. Less than 200 years. Not by much, I'd wager. Off you go. Your coin is yours to wager, assassin. It would not be the first time coin has passed between the hands of people like us, I might remind you. I'm not sure I was in need of reminding. <laughs> then you'll be glad to know I have agreed to provide my services, free of charge. Hmm. How reassuring. Okay. Uh, I wonder how he and Brooke get along. Hmm. Let's see, ah, they, and they. They went out. If you wish to return home, I will allow it. Seems unwise. Our work is not finished here. My work isn't finished here. Yours can be, if you wish it. This is dangerous work, dangerous times. It's in my blood. You are well aware I don't shy away from danger. <sighs> no, if anything, you're drawn to it like a lodestone. Oh, they those. I cannot consider this. I ache to see Alevos. That much you don't need to be told. No, and you've been away longer than usual. But she understands that it is my duty to protect you, and that is what I will do. Very well. All right. I'm glad to hear it. I am the first exiled warden. I made a vow to myself to exceed any expectation laid on me, even and especially the unmerited ones. Perhaps I can help. That means making sacrifices, as I have all my life. I've made greater ones for lesser causes, as you well know. We both have. I fear what will happen here in Delia. It is not a natural aggression that has taken over King Varric. No, he is being manipulated. That much is clear. I know of his lie. I find it unlikely that they would produce an heir incapable of distinguishing right from wrong. Agreed. Most unfortunate. The council is moving too slow on this, my friend. I know. You will reconsider allowing me to deconstruct your oath of silence? I think not. No, I will not. You aren't the only one with a torch to hold. I'll be letting down every half-elf in the Expanse. We will share what we know when we are permitted, and not a moment before. <sighs> then let us hope that moment comes in time. Okay, so Expanse makes me think more than one planet? Hmm. Wonder what the sequels to Dark Deity might be like. Okay, yeah, we can talk to Vesta. Vesta, it's good to see you again. It seems you've fared well these last few years. Huh? Goodness, has it been that long? If I remember correctly, our paths last crossed at the Crooked Spire in 1100. That's right, you have a prodigious memory made. <laughs> it's part of the job requirement. And that I can believe. But yes, I have fared well. And in times like these, you can't be too grateful for that. No, you can't. Until I found my temple overrun with undead, of course. If Irving and his friends hadn't arrived by some act of divine providence, I'd expect we'd be having a very different conversation, no? Hmm. Yes, the necromancer. Ellen seems to be the stage of relentless misfortune in this age. <sighs> has it ever been any different? Actually. It has. Every continent has seen its fair share of strife. And you've lived through plenty of it yourself. Some, yes. I think that's one of the advantages of the elves employed in the council service. They make it easier to take the long view. And the half-elves, of course. I should help. The Order. 
At any rate, whatever we're up against must be pretty serious for our factions to be collaborating again. I'm afraid it is. I'd say on the upside, our cooperation has a chance to make history, but in reality, if we play things right, the world will never know the extent of our involvement. Hmm. That's true. Taking to the shadows to keep the darkness at bay is a rather thankless job. And yet, I wouldn't trade it for all the glory of kings. No, nor would I. Okay. Ford, there's something to say to the priestess. Sylvester, so tell me, what made you pick me out of the crowd? The old humpback? The way I carried myself? Something that just screamed nautical expertise. I'm afraid not. Actually, I'd exhausted every alternative when we spent. Your ship was quite literally the only one still accepting passengers to Varroa. Uh, come on. Are you sure it wasn't my rugged charm? Hmm. I think ragged might be the word you're looking for. And you admit it was charming. Stop that. Save your breath, Ford. Really, I'm not your type. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? You don't know my type. No, but I can't say that keeps me up at night either. Then what does keep you up at night? <sighs> You're vile, you know that? No, really, I'd love to know. Gotta be pretty heavy stuff that weighs on the mind of a priestess of Thrain. Not to mention a member of a secret better than everybody in society. Fane. What's that? I'm a cleric of Fane, Ford. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure I knew that. But at any rate, I'm glad you're starting to open up. <sighs> See, that wasn't so bad. On the contrary, I already regret it. Ah, I'll admit, I'm not best known for my words, but give me time and you'll see. You'll come around. That's dubious. Sure thing. I'm not sure what that means, but I'll take it as encouragement. Unfortunate. <laughs> oh, poor Vesta. Uh, at least Ford's being nice, I guess. Ford, can we chat? Sure thing. You hit of knowledge from the wizened old Ford? <laughs> not how I was going to put it, but sure. Well, we all split different colors now, don't we? Let's hear it. Can't imagine you'd be coming to me if it were simple. Honestly, I have a harder time with simple. That's why I'm here instead of asking Corvin. You seem like you have a better grip than most on keeping things light. Uh, that I do. Though don't think I missed the subtext there. I studied in Brookstead too, you know. It's just been a long time. Oh, so I've heard. Garrick told me about it, actually. Sort of getting off point, though, and I don't want to lose my question. <sighs> I've spent most of my life as Alvin's caretaker. And I'm seeing more and more that he doesn't need me anymore. He doesn't know it yet, but I don't know what I'll do with myself when he does. Hmm. Ah, you might not know it, but you couldn't find a better person to ask. I spent a good decade as the sole person responsible for my niece. It ate away at me, really. I'd never hear the end of it, so you can't tell her. Huh? The great smuggler, Thor, responsible for anything in the world? Looks like we've got layers to peel back after all. So you're all tied up and taking care of being someone's guardian. How did you get out of it? Look, kid. Oh, I don't know that I ever did. Here's how I look at it. She's still the closest thing I have to a daughter. Gods forbid there aren't a couple running around I don't know about. It only ate away at me when I worried, though. As she grew into a strong, beautiful, capable young woman, my worries vanished. Eventually, I just trusted her to live her own life and return to my own. I miss her. And truth be told, I miss watching her grow up and being there for her. But you don't do anyone favors by lingering. They need space to grow. Little Alden didn't look so little anymore, does he? Hmm. No, I suppose he doesn't. Age doesn't always dictate maturity, I found, and trust me when I say I've met my share of old crones that can't blast a battalion of troops and only one child who can. <sighs> I just pray that this isn't all he'll ever know. No chance. Oh, get off it. You're both just kids still. He's going to live a grand old life. Black of this, I'll take him all around the world if you want. Get him a nice elf lady from the wheel. <sighs> He's 14, Ford. <laughs> there you go again with the caretaking. It was just a joke. <laughs> yeah, you better swear it was. I won't have you stealing my little brother away. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> ah, you can keep him. I like my ship nice and non-scorched anyway. Oh, that's a kind of fun competition. All right, I wonder if we'll ever meet the niece. Probably not. Or I wonder if Irene misses it. Eh, probably not. Okay, Benji and Sophia. Oh no! Is this bugged? No way! Whoa, Sophia, are you weight training? Oh, hey Benji, I guess so. I just found some of these branches and figured lifting them might help me improve my strength. Then maybe I could draw more powerful bows. Actually, yeah, you do need a lot of strength to do like an English longbow. I think it's a hundred pound weight draw. Something like that. 
That's exactly the mindset you need, Sophia. Never take your eye off the prize. Huh? Thanks so much. I sure won't. <laughs> Did you need something? Whoa. Oh, no. Just wanted to watch. Maybe I could give you some tips on your form. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. Here goes. Whoa, whoa. Hold up here. You should have someone spot you or you're going to hurt yourself. Uh oh. <laughs> Wouldn't want to do that. No, you don't. Nothing can set back progress like an injury. That's why stretching is so important, too. All right. Now, listen up. You don't want to drop the branch like that. If you do it right, you can get just as much of a workout on the way down as you do on the way up. Try again, and don't forget to breathe. All right. Whew. Hurry up. Better. Much better. You should feel that in your arms now instead of your back. Uh -huh. Oh, man. That definitely felt better. There's just so much to think about at once. Mm -hmm. I know what you mean. Don't sweat it. You'll get used to it with time. All you really need to do is make sure you're always pushing yourself to the max. Not more than that, or you'll get hurt. But any less is wasted potential. Good advice. Nothing less than the best. Hey, uh, I've got some time if you want to keep going. You really shouldn't do this without a spotter anyway. Yep. Thanks, that'd be great. You've already helped me out a lot. I know my way around this stuff. All right, let's start from the bottom with your arms fully extended. And see if you can curl it all the way up to your chin. Ready? Ready as ever. Go! Aw. So yeah, I think Benji's got a crush on Sophia. Other than that, he's also helping her work out. So that we can, you know, archer some people. Brooke and Sarah. Brooke, we should discuss your pay. Look at this. I knew this was coming. Didn't I say this was coming? Hmm. Actually, I talked it over with Samara. You've exceeded every expectation we had for you at the start. While financing this war effort is no trivial task. Here we go. We feel this is important. We'd like to give you a raise. You can't be serious. Of course. Sarah, really, with everything going on, there's no need for that. Unbelievable. You're protesting a raise? This is unexpected. Look, if you didn't give me a raise, what would you do with the money? Fund our efforts, most likely. Increase our supplies and improve our infrastructure for our troops. <laughs> and if you give it to me, what am I supposed to do with it? Hmm. Well, that would be your business. Yeah, exactly. I'd rather it not. <laughs> I'm a bit shocked, to be honest. Then let me be honest with you. I didn't leave Vorin because I couldn't find work. I left for a variety of reasons. It was complicated, but I did well for myself. If I was the type to retire to a life of luxury, I could. But when your mother reached out to me with this job, let's just say I saw an opportunity for a change of scenery, and a welcome one at that. Back then, none of us had any idea we'd ever be in this in over our heads. But one thing's for certain, you can't complain that it's not exciting. <sighs> I understand all of that, Brooke, and I want to thank you for sharing that with me. But Samara and I really want to find some way to reward you for your work. Fine. I'm sure I've sent my fair share of Aramoran patricians to the grave back in Vorin. Sign a decree for me with some immunity. Hmm. That way, I can put some gold down on some land if, for gods know why, I decided to settle down for more than a month. Then we can call it even. It's simply politics. I'm not sure I'll have that power when the time comes. I know you're worried about that. I'm not. If anyone can navigate those choppy diplomatic waters, it's you. And definitely not me. Unless we want someone killed. Surely not. No, no. None of that will be necessary in my home country. <laughs> Figured you might say that. Well, if you change your mind, or there's anything we can do in the meantime, let me know. I can't thank you enough for all you've done. Actually, was one thing. Of course. What's that? You can't be serious. Can you finally admit all this common good stuff was just a scam to get free labor out of all this gullible talent? I want to hear you tell me I'm right. Unbelievable. Oh, Brooke, you have no faith in humanity, do you? Whatever you say. You got that right. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> all right. Well, I think we are good there. Cool. Let's take a look at some stuff. We've got 12K in gold. Hmm. We've now got a Dragon Knight. So combustion is what we've turned the parts on into. Probably need to upgrade the Pylum more. Fire Dart is what I would have upgraded as a Trident for her instead of Pylum probably, but not an option now. A spell that frequent tavern goers don't appreciate as much as you might think. Nice. Um, so yes, I think we will upgrade her pylum as well. Sia, she's fine. We don't need to do anything. I 
as far as I can tell, other than maybe accuracy. Since this adds like no accuracy but a ton of critical chance, we might want to make her more accurate so she can take out those wonderful mages even better. She could disarm at five spaces now. Irving is a berserker, so he's got a felling axe, which is pretty great. So he's already fine, I think. Mm, Monroe. Monroe, Monroe, Monroe. Yeah, we we'll probably keep going Energized Bolt with him. Faust is pretty good now. Rin. Rin, we've turned into a gladiator. I think we keep going down that route if we want to. The only real question I have is, is it better to upgrade weapons now or to try to get more stats? Because it feels like we're running behind on mastery and dexterity. We're just very often not hitting enough with most characters. I think we want to make Ford's axe better. Hmm. Caius is fine. <laughs> Benji. We want to make Benji better. Hmm. But yeah, if we don't upgrade like Liberty or Sloan or Fenton or any of the people that are kind of running behind, we're going to have issues. And if I upgrade Alden's stuff too much, it's going to get too heavy for him to get double attacks. That's been the problem with Flash Lotus, I think. So maybe we just need to get Alden some more strength. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I do like the Trishula. Tier 3 tokens for that. Bianca, you're probably fine. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think we worry about upgrading our healer's weapons right now. I think we do try to upgrade some weapons. Like the longbows on the archers, I think, are things we should really consider doing more. Since clearly that gets the most accuracy buff out of everything, really. Then again, their recurve bows are also pretty accurate. Hmm. So, options. Plus, the longbows are pretty heavy, which means you're not going to get too many attacks out of them. But maybe that's fine. Maybe we just need them to poke people so then other people can KO. Or so they can get the KO. Mm -hmm. So, we've got options. First, though, I should probably buy some more healing items for everyone. Let's just make sure we've got oysters and corn. I guess there's no other healing items left in the game, maybe? Mm hmm. Get forward some corn on the cob. Caius, sure. Mm. Let's just make sure nobody's got an empty slot, basically. Because we can trade within combat as well. Yeah. So just having everybody full up is a good plan, in my opinion. Maybe I need to get rid of the 50% crit and power. Hmm. Okay, these are pretty expensive. Yeah. So yes, I think we go with some tier 3 tokens. Well, I think we don't need to worry about tier 4 just yet. Get another one of you. Okay. Now let's see. Let's get Pylum upgraded eventually, but first we need to worry about our lowest level people. Who needs more stuff? You. You're not doing much damage. Hmm. I think we do your best though. Alright. A massive Yumi. Vesta is actually decent when she can find her type matchup. Horima, my most disappointing character at the moment. Hmm. I don't know what to do with you. Hmm. Okay. We can upgrade her partisan. Which I think makes sense. Turn it into a Savisa. If you're interested in stabbing your foes from halfway across the battlefield, the Sarissa is long enough. 
Okay. What else do we wish to upgrade? We could upgrade that. We could upgrade the fire whip a little bit. Sure. We do that. Hmm. Oh, I should have upgraded the shit fatigue. Oh well. Then do we upgrade Brook? I think we might. Or Sarah. Hmm. Nah. Mystic Barrage becomes Astral Assault. Self-sustaining rune magic with one purpose. Remove your opponent from existence. Okay. I think we're all right for now. We'll just have to see how this goes. We save and call it an episode, dear viewer. Leave a like if you've enjoyed. Dark Deity on Steam. Subscribe for more gaming videos. Comment below on what you expect we will find. Pass this encampment, and I hope you have a great day, dear viewer.